Okay, today I want to talk to you guys about the four factors of production. I want to go a little bit more in depth. I introduced them the other day, but now we're going to get to know them well. Okay, real quickly, they are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. I'm going to go and give just a quick definition of each. Um, look them up in your book, find them in a couple other sources, see what they say. I imagine they'll all be pretty similar. Land is just what it sounds like, it's, it, and a little bit more. Um, so it's just the natural resources that are there. Um, land, it also, because it's economics and we like to keep things confusing, it also includes oceans and water, even though that's not technically land. But the point is, when you look at these four choices, well, you can't call the oceans labor, entrepreneurship, or capital. Therefore, it has to just sort of default into that. Okay, so that's land. Labor, again, these are people who put the things together. We haven't really talked about yet, but obviously you can manufacture things, you can grow things on a farm, you can provide a service. Labor is the one that's actually going to create the product that's that's going to be sold, whether it be an ear of corn or you know a uh, somebody changing a tire, whatever it might be. Labor is going to be the one who actually does that. Capital and economics. A lot of people have a hard time with this one. You're used to hearing about capital as money. We don't mean it as money in economics. We simply mean um, that it is a, a machine. So this could be, um, you know, a drill, a shovel, uh, a conveyor belt, a cash register, um, and then also bigger things like infrastructure, bridges and ports and things like that. If you think about it, most of what, you know, you might hear of like startup capital in the finance world or lending or something like that, you might hear about uh, startup capital. Well, the point is most of that stuff is going to be used, that money that you borrow is going to be used to buy the machines that we're talking about. So you'll get used to it. There's several things, uh, several terms that we use differently in economics than they maybe get used um, outside of economics uh, in a more common way. Uh, this is definitely one of them. So get it out of your head that it's money. Sure, kind of, but here we're really just talking about the machinery you use to make a product. Okay, finally, um, the one that is not like the others. These three are all sort of physical objects entrepreneurship, this is management, this is ingenuity, it's um, uh, people thinking about how to do something in a better way, a faster way, a more efficient way. Um, that's what, what entrepreneurship is. Okay, a few more specifics about each one. Um, different countries are given different natural resources. Um, we call it a, res a resource endowment. An endowment is just a gift. Um, oftentimes when someone dies, they leave an endowment to like a university or something like that. Um, anyhow, so obviously some countries have better natural resources than other countries. It's just a fact of life. Um, anyhow, sometimes you have a resource that isn't very important at all, and then all of a sudden it becomes important, like oil about, you know, 150 years ago. So, um, that's that. For labor, some questions that you have to ask to figure out how good is our labor. Well, sure, you need a lot of people. This is why, um, you know, China and Japan both are good in labor. But actually, when you talk about how many, well, really you're talking about how many per square mile, because Japan has a lot less people than China, but obviously lots in a small place, so lots of um, available people to work. Other countries, countries that are more sparsely populated, or economies that are more sparsely populated, um, that can be trouble. The town I'm from in California, it's a town of like 7,000 people, and during the ski season, sorry, it's a uh, ski resort, um, during the ski season, there aren't enough people to work, so they bring in all sorts of people from around the world um, to work, and, you know, they, they come there to work and have a good time and, you know, get a free ski pass and all that. So how many, depending on what you're talking about, that can be real trouble. The bigger question, though, typically is how skilled are they? And in South Africa, that's one of the big questions. Lots of people, but lots of unemployment. Well, the problem is that much of the many of the people don't have the skills that people are looking to hire. So that's a big uh, problem that needs to be solved in South Africa especially, but in, in many places. We refer to labor and we refer to how good it is kind of in, in total, we refer to it as human capital. So we might say a country like Japan has very good human capital, and a country like uh, South Africa maybe doesn't have very good human capital. 
Populations are kind of similar, but what the populations can do, the skills they possess, are quite different. Okay, for physical capital, and as soon as you start using this term human capital, you need to specify you're talking about physical capital over here. One important thing about it, it's of the, of the three, it's the most easily acquired. If I need a tractor, I can just go buy a tractor. Well, kind of. I can go buy it if I have the money, if the technology exists. Um, nonetheless, it is the most easily acquired because it's it itself, unlike the other three, it is a product. So when we talk about an economy producing things, producing products, well, capital all falls into that. It is something produced by some economy somewhere. Technology obviously is a big part of this. As technology improves, capital improves with it. Um, the key effect of capital is to increase the productivity of your labor force. And you'll see that a lot of these are very intertwined with each other. So if I have a bunch of laborers, or if I have a bunch of laborers with um, you know, power, power tools, they're obviously going to get a lot more done with better equipment. So their productivity, and what we mean by that word is how much can you produce per hour, per day, whatever, um, their productivity is certainly going to go up. Infrastructure, I almost think infrastructure is uh, should get its own category, but I'm fine with it. But you do have to understand that infrastructure is capital on a much larger scale. A better set of roads, uh, easier communication with better telephones and uh, internet and things like that, all of those things are again going to serve to increase the productivity of these other factors of production, especially these two. I mean, if you've got really good land, but you can't get to it because you don't have good roads, that's a problem. Um, if you can produce lots of really good things, but you're a landlocked country, that's going to be a problem, and it's going to take infrastructure to get your products out to the rest of the world. For entrepreneurship, um, I guess the only other thing that I'll point out is um, that typically they are the ones taking the risk, so especially in the last few years we've had a lot of people protesting about uh, the amount of money that entrepreneurs, CEOs, or whomever, uh, uh, how much money they make. Well, the reason, and I'm not saying I agree with it, the reason they justify it is, well, they're the ones who've taken the risk. Essentially what they do, or what entrepreneurship does, is organize the other three. So they go, okay, how can we use land, labor, and capital together the best to produce the most. Okay, let's bring back the PPC and look at how um, you know how this all relates to 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 it. Quick recap. So the blue line this represents the maximum we can produce, being at one point versus another point. That's a trade-off. We're saying, well, we prefer industry to agriculture. Maybe another country is going to say, well. We need to feed our people better, so we're going to have more agriculture than industry. But the point is, we can't do better than the blue line. Let's look at two examples. A country that was here at point A, we can see that they're very far from their uh, production possibilities curve. So that means that they're really underperforming. So what we're saying is they're not using their land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. They're not using it in the most efficient way. Something's gone wrong. Um, I'll show how I'll show what that might look like in a second. So their most pressing problem is how do we use what we have right now? How do we use it better? And using it better is going to result in any of these movements. It's going to move point A closer to that PPC, and a movement closer to the PPC is considered to be a good thing. Country B is a little bit different. They've got a little bit of room they can do to improve. But this is a country that is uh, operating very close to its PPC. So now its question isn't so much, how do we get closer to our PPC? They want to figure out, how do they push their PPC out? So this is kind of like um, you know, a conversation you've maybe had with your teachers and your parents at some point, where they say, well, you know, they're just not performing up to their potential. Well, that's one problem that many students have and many people have. A different problem is, well, this person is really performing their they understand everything that we give them, we need to give them more. We need to put them in, you know, more advanced classes or something like that. Okay, let's look at this problem right here for a second. I'm going to bring back my four friends. These are actually, these are four guys I used to teach with. And um, these are the numbers that were on the worksheet that you saw before. 
And just to bring a couple things out, remember Eric has the lowest opportunity cost of fishing. His opportunity cost of fishing was like 0.83. You see he's the only one that is able to catch more fish than chop firewood. Brett's equal, both Dan and Tim uh, cut more fish, <laughs> cut more firewood than they're able to catch fish. Okay? Tim, he's got the lowest cost, the lowest opportunity cost. Oh, that's wrong, isn't it? Dan has got the, mo uh, the lowest opportunity cost for firewood. I'm still going to use Tim in my example because it produces some better numbers. But um, let's, look at, let's look at what might happen if we're not very smart about using our labor over here. So let's say, you know, Tim, he's kind of a big guy. You see that he's 10 and 20. He's able to do lots of stuff. And he really is insistent on, well, I'm going to fish. I can catch enough fish, 10 fish, for all of us to eat every day, and that'll be plenty. So the rest of you guys just go cut firewood. Well, what we see would happen, Tim would fish and get 10, and the other three added together would come up with 20. I have that here. Okay, so Tim's making, getting Tim 10 fish, and uh, the rest are getting 20 firewood. Well, again, that's not the best use of resources because we know that Eric and Brett both fish at a more efficient rate than Tim does. So yeah, Tim's able to produce the most by himself, but if we look at it as the big picture, it's better if Eric and Brett do this. Okay. Now again, just for round numbers, because I like round numbers, let's see how we can produce 10 and get more over here. So Eric and Dan, 6 and 4, if they fish, they're still going to produce the same, same 10 that Tim did, but now we get Tim's 20 firewoods there, where we were losing that before. So now Tim and Brett together producing firewood, they're able to get 25. So seeing this on the PPC, the first point is point A, where Tim is doing the fishing by himself and the rest are cutting firewood, and that's 10 and 20 there. Well, by using our resources, our, our labor in this, in this case, by using our resources more efficiently, we're able to take point A and move it closer to the PPC actually onto the PPC to here at point B. Okay? Actually, I think it would be a little bit inside because we know that Dan is a little bit less efficient than, uh, than Brett was. Okay? So that's all fine and good. What might that mean for a country? Because we don't really care about my four friends over here. What we mean is how can, economy, how can an economy use its resources more efficiently? So again, think about you know even just looking around where do you see inefficiency occurring? Well, you see maybe land isn't being used the best way. Maybe people are stuck on William Nickel. Is William Nickel fixed yet? I'm dreaming, aren't I? Um, maybe people are stuck on William Nickel in traffic instead of being able to go to work, so the infrastructure needs to be better, so people aren't able to do everything that they want to do. Um, those sort of inefficient inefficiencies keep you from getting closer to your PPC. Okay. Then the last question is, how can, an economy, how can an economy shift its PPC outwards? A couple of nuts and bolts things for you. I don't think I've used this term yet, shift. When we say shift, um, what we mean is the whole curve, the whole line that we're looking at is going to move. Okay? Uh, I think in math this is a translation, basically. When we talk about a single point moving, we, we use a different term. But shift simply uh, means, the, means the whole curve. So. If we're looking at an economy and shifting its PPC outwards, this was the problem uh, country B was having a few, uh, few pages back. So a country like this, where they're producing on their PPC, they can't do anything more. They need to figure out how to produce more. Well, they're going to do it by getting, improving the quantity. So how many, how much land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship do they have? And this is why in South Africa, for example, right now, you see a very aggressive policy of trying to improve education. That's improving the quality, or I'm sorry, the quantity um, of skilled labor. You could also argue, though, that it's improving the quality of the existing labor force. Either one of those is fine. It doesn't really matter how you uh, classify it. So improving the quantity or quality of factors of production is how we're going to end up shifting the PPC out. You guys are going to do a little practice with this, and uh, let me know any questions you might have.